Hello and welcome to our midweek reading, talk and prayers for the 7th and 8th of April. The Collect for Easter Day. God of glory, by the raising of your son, you have broken the chains of sin and death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the way of life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our first reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Peter heals a lame beggar. One day, Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter and said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognised him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And our gospel reading is from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35 on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and then gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Father, May these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
come Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of the experience of two of Jesus' followers on the road to Emmaus heading out of Jerusalem is one of the great tales of the resurrection. Cleopas and his friend, and it may actually have been his wife, another Mary, were really low. Jesus had been crucified and his body had gone missing. So the story starts with sorrow and worry and suspense. We may know what's going to happen as we read this story every Easter, but the two people walking on that dusty road had no idea. When this fellow traveller struck up conversation, they may have felt a bit anxious about revealing they were friends of Jesus. Perhaps this man was a spy for the authorities. Then they were puzzled by the wisdom and knowledge shown by the stranger. He seemed to know more about the scriptures and about Jesus than they did. And yet they didn't recognise him as one of Jesus' followers. As well as knowing all about Jesus, this chap seemed to think that Jesus' death was not the end of the story. But it must be. And then, finally, of course, when they sat down to eat and drink, they realised who the stranger was and that Jesus was alive. We may wonder why Cleopas and his companion did not recognise Jesus on the walk. Possibly this is more than them being focused on their own misery and simply not expecting to see him. There is some implication that the risen Lord looked a bit different to the way he had before. Unlike Lazarus or, or Jairus's daughter who had been brought back to life by Jesus, but who would eventually die again, this Jesus was never going to die. He had overcome death. And by conquering death and sin, he had brought into being a new world, the world which is being transformed into the kingdom of God, when everything will be made new and perfect. The two didn't realise it was Jesus on the road beside them, and they didn't realise that the ending of the story of Jesus' life had not come with his death on the cross. They cottoned on to who he was when he broke the bread as they ate together, something Jesus had done in meals with his followers, and especially the last time they had all eaten together, when he had commanded them to remember him in the breaking of bread and drinking of wine. In this account of one of Jesus' resurrection experiences, we have the scriptures, as Jesus explained how the Old Testament and the prophets foretold his coming and what he would do. The sacrament of communion as Jesus broke the bread and the presence of Christ himself helping and guiding his friends. Cleopas's forlorn words on the road. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel can be recast as the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. And that is how he redeemed Israel and everyone who turns to him. So we are welcomed out of slavery and sin and death into a new journey, into a new promised land. The road to Emmaus is just the beginning. We can hear Jesus' voice in the Bible. We can experience him through communion. We can know him in our lives as friend and saviour, and we can work with him to bring his kingdom to everyone. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our faith and for you in our lives. We don't want to be mean with our faith, hugging it closely to ourselves. We want to get out on the road of life and share it with all who cross our path. Help us, Lord. Amen. And our prayers. In the breaking of the bread, the disciples recognised Jesus. Help us to see you in bread and wine. In the face of the poor waiting in a refugee camp, help us to recognise your loving face. 
in the arms of the mother whose child has died. Help us to see your comforting hands. In the mind of those who no longer recognise their loved ones, help us to see your presence. In the body of the man told he has six months to live, help us to perceive your loving arms. In the eyes of the woman whose lifelong partner has died, help us to cry your tears. Lord, the hands you have are ours, help us to hold. The eyes you have are ours, help us to see. The tears you have are ours, help us to weep with those who weep. The face you have is ours, help us to show your love. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray especially for Florrie and all Ron's family and for the family of Jill. Also for Peter G, Uggy, Christine, Dave Wood, Dot, Alan, Tez, Pam Stark, Peter Nobbs, Jean Harris, Sarah and her mum Sheila, Tim Newman and the Turi School community in Kenya where Covid is very bad. A moment's silence to pray for people and situations on your heart. Lord, assure them and us of your care and comfort. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And a blessing. As we make our journey along the road of life, some of us joyous, some with a heavy heart. May we know you walking with us, loving God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>